If you're playing World of Warcraft for the first time and are wondering how to level your character, then this video is going to give you everything you need to get started. There are already some great leveling guides out there, but I've noticed that they're mostly aimed at people who already have a max level character. And for that reason, they're generally jammed full of assumed knowledge and min-max type stuff that's just going to overwhelm you as a new player and to be honest, probably ruin the experience. If you're brand new, you're not going to be at that stage in your Warcraft journey where you're able to access every obscure potion and rare item from each of the game's many expansions in order to squeeze out that extra bit of efficiency while leveling. Most likely, you're right at the beginning with a level 1 character, and that's where we're going to start. So we're going to start by talking about the main ways to level in the game, and then we're going to go on to outline the basic systems that you're going to need to understand to go through that process, and finally we're going to look at a couple of things that you may want to do to enhance your experience. Oh, and if you like the video, then don't forget to subscribe for more World of Warcraft beginner guides. In WoW, you need to gain experience points in order to level, with each level requiring a little more experience than the previous one. Many activities award experience, including killing enemies, completing quests, exploring new areas, and even from gathering resources in the open world. In fact, the majority of things you do in-game will provide you with some amount of experience. However, despite the many ways to gain experience, two of them are far more efficient than the others, and they represent the two key ways of leveling that you will likely hear about. These are quest leveling and dungeon leveling. There are also a couple of alternative options for leveling that may appeal to certain types of player, so we're going to take a look at those as well. So starting with questing. Well, basically for the first 10 to 15 levels, you don't have much of a choice. You're going to spawn into your starting area, which will depend on your race, in some cases your class, and the expansion that you're currently playing in. These starting areas are fairly simple, you just follow the quests that are pretty much spoon fed to you. This little exclamation mark means that the NPC, non-player character, has a quest available to you. Once you've accepted this quest then you're able to see your quest objective by pressing L. You'll notice that it even shows you where to complete this objective on your map. Once you complete the quest in your starter zone you're going to be directed to the next zone and you can pretty much just follow this path all the way to max level. Of course some paths are more efficient than others and we will actually talk about that a little in the mod section towards the end of the video but the bottom line is they all work and for your first character I'd encourage you just to explore the areas and complete the quests that you find interesting. If you move on from an area before finishing every single quest, which you likely will, then remember to abandon them by right clicking them in your quest log and pressing abandon. Otherwise you're going to run out of space in the quest log and you won't be able to accept new quests. When you hit level 15, or probably level 10 if you're playing in Shadowlands, then you're going to unlock something called the Dungeon Finder. Dungeons are 5 player group content in which you work together in order to defeat a series of boss encounters, complete some specific quests and gain some nice rewards for your efforts. You can manually walk to a dungeon and enter it through the dungeon portal, however the Dungeon Finder makes it really easy by teleporting you to the dungeon and then teleporting you back once you've finished it. This way you can just continue uninterrupted with your questing. You can access this feature by pressing I on your keyboard or by clicking the little green I icon on the micro menu to the bottom right of your screen. You'll notice that you have the option to either join a random dungeon or target a specific dungeon that you particularly want to visit. It's worth noting that you get a significant amount of bonus experience and some pretty nice rewards for completing a random dungeon. At first you'll notice you don't have many options in your list but you're going to unlock more and more dungeons as you level. Now if you absolutely hate questing then it's totally viable and currently actually extremely fast to level exclusively via dungeons. You just queue dungeon after dungeon and it really won't take you that long to get to max level. However, if you're going to do this then I would suggest playing a tank or a healer as they're far more in demand and your dungeon queues are going to be a hell of a lot quicker, in fact they're going to be mostly instant. If you play a DPS class then you're going to have to wait a little longer. As you're a total beginner, you're probably going to be wondering what on earth I mean when I say tank, healer or DPS. Well, in very basic terms, tanks draw the attention of the enemies and absorb as much damage as possible to protect the group. The healer uses a collection of spells to sustain the group, restoring their health and removing other harmful effects. And the DPS, which actually stands for damage per second, which is kind of weird, I know, are essentially responsible for dealing maximum damage to the enemy. There's a hell of a lot more to it than that, but I'll make a separate beginner's guide to go into more detail on those specific things. You may also have noticed that the interface for the dungeon finder actually allows you to queue for more than just dungeons. On the left hand side you can see a tab for raid finder, one for scenarios and one for pre-made groups. Now raids are essentially dungeons but with more players and generally a higher level of difficulty. They're not something that people generally become involved in until max level. You do have the option to complete some of the older raids whilst leveling up, however they barely give any experience so you're likely going to struggle to find other players to complete them with. Scenarios are a bit of a weird one, they're a form of free player content that were more relevant in the midst of Pandaria expansion. They haven't had a lot of development done to them since but you can play them for a while when you reach that level range, that's entirely up to you, I think the experience is reasonably good for them. They offer some bonus XP in the same way that the random dungeon queue does. 
Pre-made groups, however, are going to be a lot more relevant to you as they're going to allow you to join or create custom groups in order to take on a more difficult group quest, for example. Or you might just have some other objective that requires more than one person. These group quests will be clearly flagged in your quest log as needing more than one player. Another thing you might have noticed on the Dungeon Finder interface are the tabs at the bottom, and one of them reads player versus player. This is where you can queue to fight in battlegrounds or arenas. Battlegrounds are objective based player versus player battles. Fair warning, if you're totally new then you're most likely going to get destroyed by other players. People have been playing this game for a very long time and most people you'll encounter won't be new players. They'll probably be people leveling a second or third or perhaps even 50th character. By all means go ahead and try a battleground to get the idea of what they're about and see if it's something you're going to enjoy. Just don't expect to do particularly well until you start learning the game a little better. As with dungeons you're going to unlock more battlegrounds as you level and if you do a random one you're going to get some bonus XP. But only if you win. It's entirely possible to level all the way to max just by doing battlegrounds. This never used to be a thing in WoW, but it is these days. If you're one of those people who already knows you're a PvP player through and through and you have absolutely no interest in quests and dungeons, then you might actually consider taking this option. It will be significantly slower and it involves some serious beatdowns early on, but on the plus side you'll likely be a far better player when you hit max level from having done this. The vast, vast majority of people don't take this route and that's why I described it as an alternative way of leveling, but again it might be something that you want to consider. In terms of the other PvP tabs in the group finder, you can see that there are arenas, which are 2v2 or 3v3 battles that are generally for more experienced players. You definitely want to know a lot more about your class and everyone else's classes really before you start even trying to do arenas. Then you have the rated tab, which is for ranked PvP. Again, this is for max level players. I don't think you can even queue for rated PvP until you hit max level, so I wouldn't worry about that one for now. Then pre-made groups function in much the same way as they do in the Dungeon Finder, but this time they're intended for PvP based quests and activities rather than PvE ones. PvE stands for player versus environment, so basically fighting against AI rather than people. The second alternative option is to simply buy a max level boost. In fact, if you pay for Battle for Azeroth or Shadowlands, then you already have one. I would strongly recommend not using this boost on your first character. 99% of people are going to be totally overwhelmed by the huge range of spells, talents and mechanics that you're gradually introduced to throughout the leveling process. If you do a max level boost, you're going to get them all at once. You're going to be trying to learn the advanced mechanics of the game prior to having learned the basics. It's not akin to being thrown into the deep end of the swimming pool before you learn to swim, but more like being chucked off the side of a boat into an ice cold fjord in the pitch black with a blindfold on and your arms tied behind your back. Other players will become very impatient with you when it becomes clear that you have absolutely no idea what to do in group content and while I'm dead against toxicity in the community I do absolutely understand this particular frustration. There may be the odd exception of some of you who have been watching people play WoW for years and actually know the game inside out but you never actually ended up playing it but I've personally never met anyone like this. Every boosted player I have ever encountered has been terrible aside from those who already reached max level on another character. I can't tell you the best route to take while leveling as it's going to differ based on your tastes. However, I can tell you the route that I would recommend for the vast majority of new players. This is the mixed approach to leveling and it's pretty much what Blizzard intended when they built the game. As a new player, I'd suggest following the story through for each zone that you choose to explore and to play each dungeon that you unlock at least once. This is due to most dungeons having a set of unique quests that you can complete only once. And these quests offer nice experience and rewards. By completing each dungeon once, you have the opportunity to try every dungeon at the point that it will give you the greatest benefit. But at the same time, you won't miss out on the opportunity to explore and get to know the rest of Azeroth, which you are going to miss if you only spam dungeons. Story-wise, many of the dungeons are often part of the narrative for the particular zone that they're found in, so this approach is actually going to help you to maintain that general storytelling flow as well. Then of course you can also weave in some battlegrounds as you level and start to feel more confident and are ready to take on players of the opposing faction. A great built-in resource for taking this approach to leveling is the adventure guide. If you hit shift J then this will bring up a panel that's going to inform you of the latest activities that you might want to take part in based on your level. This is going to include zones, dungeons, battlegrounds as well as other events. In fact, if you take nothing else from this video, then remember to use the adventure guide when you're not sure what to do next. It will always offer you plenty of content to enjoy. One question that I'm often asked and kind of feeds into the whole adventure guide is which expansion should you level in? My answer to that is that if you want to play the game strictly chronologically from a story perspective then do them in the order that they were released. However there are simply too many quests in each expansion to complete all of them while leveling. You'd hit max level many times over from the experience gained. So in reality you just have to kind of pick the ones that sound interesting to you. Or if you just want to be super efficient in your questing then you can install a certain add-on that we're going to talk about later in the video. 
Again, the adventure guide is your friend here. It's gonna tell you which content is appropriate for your current level and present you with the choices between expansions. If you're leveling as a new player after the launch of Shadowlands, then it's gonna be different again. You're gonna be leveling from one to 10 in Exile's Reach, and then you're gonna go through the battle for Azeroth storyline from level 10 to level 50. Finally, arriving in Shadowlands to do level 50 to 60, as the level cap is being reduced from 120 to 60, and this is basically in order to prevent the levels from getting out of control. This will be different for players who are leveling a second character, and they're essentially be able to still do it in the old way and pick which expansions they want to play. So now we've talked about the ways in which you can level your character, let's talk about some of the other things that you need to know while leveling. This is essentially information that will make your journey more enjoyable and far less confusing. Firstly, let's talk about classes, races and specializations, or specs for sure. The headline is, as always, play what you think you're going to enjoy. If you really want to min-max, then pay attention to your race, and I would suggest googling the latest information on which race is best for which class. This is always going to depend on the current state of the game and which racial abilities synergize best with which classes. However, don't even bother googling which individual class is best, as there is no answer to that, and it's going to change all the time based on the current flavor of the month. Honestly, it's a total waste of your time. Specs on the other hand are more relevant to you at this early stage as they're going to correspond with the roles of tank, healer and DPS as we talked about earlier. DPS specs which are marked by this little icon are generally going to be a lot faster when questing than tanking and healing specs which are marked with these two icons. Tanks and healers are very difficult to kill but they don't output as much damage so it just takes you longer to kill things. However as we mentioned earlier they're going to get faster queue times for dungeon as they're far more in demand than DPS. The good news is that you can easily switch between the different specs whenever you like and I'd recommend doing so anyway in order to learn each one as you level. Do note that not all classes have specs for tanking and healing but every class has at least one DPS spec so you're going to need to consider this when you're picking your class to avoid disappointment. There are also two classes that are known as hero classes. These are the demon hunter and the death knight. Both of these classes start at a higher level in their own unique areas. The big difference for new players is that the basics will be introduced to you at a much faster rate. So these two classes are usually considered more suitable if you've at least played an MMORPG before and you generally understand how things work. Otherwise, if you haven't got that kind of experience, you might risk information overload with the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight. Once you've picked a class and started questing, you're going to quickly notice that you pick up many, many items during your adventures, and you're probably wondering what to do with them. Well, this depends on the type of item you find, and here are some of the different types of items that you're going to come across. Firstly, you have quest items, which have a particular role to play in a particular quest, but no role outside of that, so that one's pretty simple. You have armor that you can equip by right-clicking it in your inventory or dragging it and dropping it onto your character panel. By the way, you can access your inventory by pressing B and your character panel by pressing C. Armor offers varying levels of protection as well as bolstering your offensive capabilities through the stats that it offers. These are things like strength, stamina, intellect, and agility. An item will be an upgrade if it offers better stats than your existing piece. The best place to search items is Wowhead, and you can check websites such as Icy Veins to understand what the best stats are for your particular class. I'll also recommend an add-on to help you with this later in the video. Items have different rarities, starting at common and progressing through uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Generally, if two items are at the same level, then the rarer one is going to be more powerful unless the item has the wrong stats for your class. There are also two other categories of items, artifacts and heirlooms. Artifacts aren't worth worrying about as a beginner, and we'll get to heirlooms later in the video. Why am I telling you about this in the leveling guide? Well, it's because the more powerful your armor, the more damage you're going to both dish out and absorb, which is going to make leveling a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot faster. Everything we've just said applies to weapons as well. It's worth noting that both weapons and armor take damage, and though you'll probably replace the gear so quickly while leveling that you won't often need to repair, if you do find yourself with broken armor, which you're going to see flagged in the top right of the screen in this case, then you just need to go to one of the many vendors that will offer you the option to repair your items. Just look for this little anvil button at the bottom of the window. Next we have consumables. You're essentially going to discover many consumable items during your adventures that are going to have a particular use inside or outside of combat. A classic example would be health potions that are going to help to keep you alive when things start to look a little dicey. I won't go through every type of consumable as there are hundreds, however I would suggest reading the tooltip of everything you find while leveling as anything that keeps you alive or increases your damage a little bit is going to speed up the leveling process. There are also recipes available that are going to teach you how to create certain items in game ranging from new armor to jewelry to potions. To be honest, these are really going to be quite useless to you while leveling unless you're really into collecting and you'll see why when we start to talk about professions. Of course, to make any of the items from these recipes, you're going to need trade goods, which are essentially 
reagents that you collect and then combine to produce goods used in your professions. Again, we'll talk about this a little later because there are some reasons why you probably don't want to bother with professions until you hit max level, or at least until you get to the latest expansion in the series. You'll also find gems which you can use to empower your items. These can be useful to various extents and can speed up the leveling process as they'll do a bit more damage with your weapons or offer a bit more protection to your armor. You might find some glyphs that are going to provide various cosmetic effects, usually changing the animation of a spell. Certainly not critical for leveling, but maybe fun. Then you have containers, which are basically bags. You put stuff in them. But jokes aside, they're actually extremely important as you're going to quickly run out of inventory space and you're going to want to expand your capacity using different types of containers. You can buy some bags from vendors, but usually the best source is the auction house where you can buy bags that have been crafted by other players. They're generally going to be a lot larger and probably better value than the ones sold by the vendors. There are also many, many junk items that you're going to pick up. You can identify a junk item easily as its text is going to be grey and these items really have no other use aside from selling them to a vendor. However, these little bits of gold do stack up and having a decent amount of gold can really help with the leveling experience. And finally there are a whole range of weird and wonderful items that don't necessarily fit neatly into one of these categories. These are things like toys and other little fun items. Again there are far too many to list in this video but Wowhead is a great source of information that lists pretty much every item that exists in game or has ever existed in game. Regardless of the item type, anything that you don't need and you have no use for you can essentially sell for gold. You can do this either to a vendor or to other players via the auction house. Of course, if you put something on the auction house, it has to be something there's a real demand for in the player base. Auction houses can be found in most cities. If you run out of storage space in your bags, which inevitably you will, then you can start to transfer items from your inventory to your bank. You're going to loot so many items whilst leveling and you may or may not want to deal with them straight away. So if you're not sure about a particular item and you think maybe you need to save it, then it really helps to have a bank just to chuck that in and think about it later on. Banks can be found in most cities and offer similar functionality to your backpack. However, you won't be able to access them whilst outside of the city unless you have particular items that allow you to do so, which as a beginner, you won't. So only store items that you don't need to use while on your adventures. Just like in your inventory, you can add additional bags to your bank to increase capacity. However, the difference is that it costs gold to buy additional slots as well as the bags themselves. Speaking of gold, this is going to be essential in your Warcraft journey. There are many sources of gold in the game, such as completing quests, looting, from the body of fallen enemies, selling items, or even taking part in group events via the dungeon finder. Again, there are just too many to list them all in detail, but the key thing is to avoid wasting your gold. I would suggest avoiding buying weapons and armor from the auction house whilst you level, for example. You're going to replace them so quickly that it likely won't be worth it, and it would be a smart move to save the gold you earn for vital purchases. A key example of this is coming up next. This is riding training, which is going to allow you to use mounts. Now, in the simplest form, this is a horse that's going to help you get around fast faster which is going to save you a lot of time while questing. Mounts in WoW range from the simple horse we just mentioned all the way to the weird and wonderful insects, robots, dragons and just about anything else you can imagine. In fact there's even a flying pig. Once you reach level 20, though note this will likely change in Shadowlands, probably to level 10, you're going to be given a quest that will tell you to report to a riding instructor. The location of this instructor is going to depend on which race you've chosen, but it's going to be pretty clear in the quest log and on the map. This instructor is going to charge you a small fee that will teach you to ride. There are several different levels of riding training that will allow you to ride faster and then fly and then fly faster, but the process is the same each time. You're just going to be prompted to visit the trainer when you get to the level that you're able to unlock the next upgrade. Nearby the train there should also be a vendor selling basic mounts. Once you buy one of these mounts you can right click it in your inventory and then it gets added to your collections tab. If you access your collections tab by pressing shift p, in fact that's probably pets but it's the same tabs, so hit shift p, select the mounts tab and then drag it onto your action bar to use. This will allow you to mount up just like any other ability though do note that you have to be out of combat to do so. Mounts are fairly cheap but the riding training element can be quite expensive so this is probably what you're going to want to save your gold for and why I was talking about not wasting money on weapons and armour from the auction house earlier on. You may also be wondering about professions while levelling. The question I hear most is whether you need to keep your profession skill level up to speed with your character level, which was definitely the case in the old days of WoW, but that's no longer relevant. These days there are catch up mechanics applied to professions and you only have to level your profession through the latest expansion in order to be able to craft max level items. This essentially means that professions aren't really necessary or even useful while leveling unless you find them particularly fun. There is one useful way to use professions however and that's for generating gold. If you want to put that little bit of extra effort in then I would suggest you pick up some gathering professions such as mining, skinning or herbalism and this is going to allow you to harvest resources and sell them to players on the auction house which will actually net you quite a significant amount of gold. 
Another useful thing to know about while leveling is war mode. I actually made a video on this a while back and I'll link it here, but basically turning war mode on will mean that the opposite faction can attack you while you're questing in the open world. Some people absolutely love that experience, others hate it. So if you want a peaceful experience, then leave it turned off. And if you like to live a little more dangerously, then you can turn it on and you will actually get an experience bonus for having it on. However, prepare for that bonus to be cancelled out to some extent by the fact that you're probably going to die quite a lot. Anyway, check my war mode video in the description down below for a bit more detail on this. I'd also recommend joining a guild so that you can learn from other players. You can see guilds advertising for new recruits in game. There's actually a guild panel that you can access in your micro menu, or you could use a forum like Reddit to find like-minded players. In fact, if you're on European servers, then you are more than welcome to join our Alliance Guild on Silvermoon. I'll be sure to put a link to the Discord server in the description down below. And in fact, you don't even have to be joining the guild to join the Discord. It's just a good WoW community to be part of. Guilds are essentially going to provide you with a number of perks, such as allowing access to particular items in game, giving you shared storage space in form of a guild bank, and most of all, the opportunity to learn from more experienced players and make some new friends along the way. It's also really handy when it comes to finding people to do group content with. Now the two final things I want to talk about can actually drastically change your WoW experience, both speeding up leveling and adding a whole range of convenience features. However, you may not necessarily want to use them right away. Firstly, we have heirlooms. These are items that you can equip to drastically speed up leveling due to the experience gain boosts that they provide, not to mention the powerful booster stats. However, they are expensive and you likely won't have a lot of gold as a new player. And the gold you do manage to save, you're gonna to want to spend it on other things like the riding training that we talked about earlier. The reality is that these items are technically attainable by new players, but they're not designed for them. And for that reason, they are far more difficult to get of a brand new account. They're designed for max level players who have already experienced the whole leveling journey, usually many times before, and they just want to find a way of speeding it up a little on subsequent characters. Now, it could be the case that time is a lot more precious to you than money when it comes to leveling. An example might be that you're trying to catch up with some friends, but you also have a very busy life outside of WoW. And essentially, you want to get to max level a little faster, but you don't want to boost and be chucked right in at the deep end. If this is the case, then you could buy a WoW token for real world currency and then use the gold that you get from that token to buy heirlooms. However, aside from doing that, you just have to save gold or be given it by another player. The former is going to probably make for a miserable experience and it might take so long messing around that you may as well have just leveled without the heirlooms. And unless you already have a friend in game, then the latter is going to be based purely on luck or dancing on mailboxes for hours at a time. If you don't get that reference yet, you will soon enough. There are also other items that will give you a boost and I alluded to them in the introduction. These are things like XP potions, flight path toys, special mounts and plenty of others that are essentially going to make it easier for experienced players to level. However, the fact that they're for experienced players is exactly why I've left them out of this guide as this information is targeted at beginners, not by veterans. And in reality, most of these items are not easily attainable or are in fact impossible to get with a brand new account. The final thing I want to talk about is mods or add-ons. I would urge caution when installing mods. You're absolutely going to want to use them, they are brilliant, but you should really only introduce two to three at a time or they're likely going to overwhelm you and make your UI a total mess. I would actually advocate for starting without add-ons and playing for a while with the default Blizzard interface. This is going to allow you to understand what the default systems are and get a better appreciation of how add-ons enhance that player experience. When you do start installing add-ons, I'd suggest starting with free. Firstly, you may want to use Azeroth Autopilot. This is going to give you the most efficient path for questing. If you don't care about the most efficient path, don't install it. The second is PAWN, which I'm not going to pronounce as I'll probably get in trouble with YouTube. This one's really useful as it's going to tell you which items are an upgrade for your character, which can be a little confusing as a beginner. You'll see when you hover over an item with this add-on installed that it'll give you a little green upwards arrow and tell you how much of a percentage increase it is on your previous item for your current spec. Have a play around of it, it's pretty self-explanatory. The third one I would consider early on is an inventory management add-on such as Bagnon or Adibags. These add-ons offer a far better inventory interface than the Blizzard default one. Personally, I really like Adibags as it categorizes my inventory without me really having to do anything at all and not having to mess around with a load of configuration options. But there are lots of options. Have a little Google and see what you think might work for you. These three add-ons are essentially going to improve your early experience without requiring much in the way of configuration. You can install them by downloading the Twitch client and selecting the mods tab. This actually used to be a function of the curse client, but it's since been taken over by Twitch. Then, as you get a little more used to the game, you might want to consider some add-ons that enhance the default UI in more significant ways, but they're going to require a bit more time to set up. As you can see from the footage, I actually use add-ons to place my abilities in a more central position on the bar. This is enabled by an add-on called Bartender. You may also notice that my player avatar and my target 
it and not in the default positions either. And I achieved this using something called shadowed unit frames. There is a huge, huge amount to explore when it comes to add-ons and a lot of it's really down to personal preference. For example, many people would say that x is far superior to my shadowed unit frames, but that's just personally what I like to use. The big takeaway message is to introduce a few at a time and not to clutter your UI too early on. And there you go, that's it, thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, then consider subscribing for more Warcraft beginner guides. But either way, enjoy your adventures in Azeroth and I look forward to seeing you again next time.